right. Okay. <laughs> Greetings, everybody. Let's just give this one moment to make sure that uh, I'm coming through okay. I've got a new setup right now, uh, which is why there was such a delay. I created a stream and another one and another one. I think this one's working. I can see myself right now. Uh, I can't hear myself though. I've got myself muted so you don't get like a feedback loop. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, looks good. Let me just adjust my microphone. Yeah. This is what happens when it's live, guys. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Microphone's kind of doing a weird thing. It's pointed above my head. So I uh, apologize if I'm a little quiet. Oh, and thank you, Michael L. I've been <laughs> struggling to even like start this thing and Michael L just gave me $1.99. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So um, yeah, so I guess the first thing I should talk about is the new setup. I uh, was for the longest time just using my phone to do these live streams. That way, as I film myself, I can see the, the comments rolling by and I can answer things and, and have more control. And above all, be able to sit on this couch and, um, and do my live stream rather than have to sit over there. Because I, I have a desktop computer, guys, not a, not a laptop. So I wanted to be able to, uh, to do that. Uh, and the phone just made the most sense. But the problem with the phone is that uh, I am connected wirelessly using Wi-Fi. My internet is like... I've been working on it, but it's not as great as it should be. <laughs> so uh, I noticed a few of my videos are really blocky. I did a review on um, a live review on a durian that Miami Fruit sent me like a while back. And it just looked like I shot it with like a Game Boy camera uh, from like 1986. Like it looked really, really bad. And uh, that's because my phone, my phone just like had a bad connection. So I've been trying to fix that. And it's just still, it's, it got better, but not as good as it should be. So I invested in connecting my actual camera, like the camera that I shoot my videos with, which is a Canon M50. It's a, it's a really good camera. It shoots in 4K, does like everything. Uh, it does not have a webcam feature though. So what I did is I downloaded this app that lets you convert it. It was like 50 bucks. And then I got like these long cords that will connect my camera here to my desktop, which is like over there, like 20 feet away. So right now I've got long cords going everywhere and like all this stuff. So I, I'm hoping that this works a lot better and all of those problems that I had before are behind me. Um, <laughs> I think it's so far it looks pretty good. And to make sure that everything is running smoothly because I don't have comments in front of me, I have a, uh, a laptop in front of me here, right here, I've got a little laptop. So I'm looking at comments as I film on a camera that is going to a desktop. So that's what's going on. Uh, one thing with this setup is that uh, my camera does not plug in, so I'm running off a battery. So there is a there is a limit to how long I can talk before this thing dies. So if I just suddenly die on you, uh, not, I mean the stream, not I mean if I die on you, like actually you know help me. But like if the if the stream suddenly cuts out, it might be that my camera died and I need to switch the battery. So um, apologize if that ever happens, but I think it should be good. I got a fresh battery in there. So uh, let's get it rolling with the stream. Thank you for all your patience. I'm looking here, we've got 75 people watching. I'm gonna take a little look here. Jash Pan says, hi, hi. Nameless Gaming, hi. Cat Meow Meow, hi. All right, it looks good. I think we're rolling. I'm, I'm glad, I'm, I'm happy about this, guys. So I would like to just um, go over like a few things 
exciting things happening with the channel. There's a few new things come along. And I also have uh, a tarragon soda, which in uh, the first stream that I tried to set, I had a thumbnail with me with it and all that. So you probably didn't see that if you're watching this now. Um, this is something that I picked up at a Russian supermarket uh, a while back before all the coronavirus stuff happened. So I'll be getting into that in a little bit. This is going to be exciting, guys. So, um, okay, let me first bring up the first order of business. I've got a piece of paper here with all of the, all the things that I want to talk about on it. So <laughs> first order of business is uh, this is May in June. June is going to be a special month because June is going to be a theme month. And uh, the theme is, I'm going to call it use the whole damn thing month. So I usually review the fruit of many different plants. And sometimes I'll review the seed. But this month is going to be reviewing parts of a fruit that are usually discarded. So, uh, you know, like I reviewed ice cream bean a while ago, and then I made a video where I reviewed the seeds. This would be like a video where I'm going to use every part of a fruit, or to the best of my abilities. Maybe there'll be like a small part that I can't eat, but to the best of my abilities, I'm going to review every part of a fruit. So, um, one thing that I was thinking of doing, I don't think it's going to be in this month, maybe a next, a future one, is like uh, like an orange. Instead of just eating the fruit, I'll be doing, I would do a review of the fruit and then also do something with the rind and show different ways that you can use the rind. Because you can eat citrus rinds. They're fine. You can like candy them. You can uh, grate them and put them in a tea. You can use them for all sorts of different things. Make lemon curd out of lemon rind what have you. So uh, an example would be to use the whole fruit, use every single part of it. Uh, I didn't, I specifically didn't use that one because the seeds of oranges and lemons and all that are not edible. So didn't really fly. I'm going to try to use the seed, the rind, the fruit and all that of all the fruits that I'm going to be doing in that month. And it was um, a pretty interesting experience. I already filmed everything, uh, basically, but what I had to do is I basically would just take a fruit, like a common fruit, sometimes some weird ones, and just search for alternative um, recipes. Like, okay, like, little spoiler, I think one of the ones is going to be on cacao, because I had some cacao that was sent to me. Uh, so you can eat cacao beans, which is how chocolate, where you get chocolate, you can eat the uh, the rind, not rind, but the um, the chaff around the seed that you can use to make a tea. The flesh, you can use the flesh. You can eat that, although usually it's discarded. It is an edible fruit. And then finally, the pod, which is almost always thrown out, you can eat it. Like there is a very obscure recipes out there, not very common not very tasty <laughs> where you can actually eat the pot and it was completely new to me but i basically I, I started with having the fruit and i tried to find all the different parts online recipe for seeds recipe for fruit recipe for pod and i found something for the pod too so you can actually eat the entire thing so i'll be breaking it down they're probably gonna be kind of like long episodes too because it'll be a review for every single part from seed to flesh to rind to chaff to like all that pith of a fruit, I'll be doing all of that. And uh, I think they're going to be good. It was, it was a very fun thing to do. And um, I might do it again, too. So we'll, we'll see how well this, this month goes. But it should be a pretty interesting month. So basically, every Wednesday and Sunday, I'll be posting a uh, one of those episodes where I'll do, like, a snout-to-tail review of a fruit. Should be, should be pretty cool. And um, Fridays will still be the... Um, a random episode that'll be like for amazing plants or pepper review, junk food reviews, uh, stuff like that. That'll be on Fridays, but uh, Wednesday and Sunday, it's going to be this uh, nose to tail sort of, uh, sort of thing about fruit. Okay. That was one order of business. Let me take a look at the comments here. <laughs> 
CJ Rocker is crying and bitter. Yeah, a lot of the things that I that I had were um, normally thrown out for a reason, and people do find a way to eat them. Sometimes it was done more out of like necessity rather than um, rather than actually tasting good. And uh, I think that's the case with like cacao pods and stuff like that. But other ones, like there's trends to eat like banana peels and stuff like that. So um, sometimes it was a culinary thing. Sometimes it was a necessity thing. Just made it more interesting. Uh, Andreas 2064 is watching from Malta, Europe at 2.20 a.m. Greetings. Thanks for staying up with me. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next order of business. That is uh, something I talked about in the last live stream that I did uh, last month is um, because I recently hit 100,000 subscribers, I wanted to do sp something special for that. So I had the idea of doing uh, a new series where I face off different fake milks or milk alternative or plant-based milks against each other and try to find the best one because there's soy milk, cashew milk, almond milk, avocado milk, hemp milk, quinoa milk. There's milk, of, and these are all real things, by the way. There are uh, milk alternatives or plant-based milk out of everything. Uh, maybe there's a tarragon one. I should try to find that. There are so many different ones, and I want to see which ones are good and which ones aren't. So I'll be doing tournament-style um, a tournament style battle against the milks, doing like different challenges with each one, trying each one and seeing which one wins. And uh, I've already filmed almost all of the first season of this. What I've decided to do is I'm going to break it up. I'm going to do um, a round one where there'll be four different rounds. So I guess eight different milk alternatives. And the best one will move on to round two, which I guess is like, what is that like? I don't know. Two. I can't. I can't do the math right now. But like, I'm going to break it down, and the winner of that will be the winner of uh, of the season. So I shot all of that basically already, and those are going to be showing up on the channel the following month. So not the uh, use the whole damn thing month, but in July, those are going to be taking place during, um, I think I'll be putting them out on Wednesdays. So usually uh, on the channel, if you haven't noticed, I do Sundays and Wednesdays, I do a fruit review. And then Fridays, I do some like random review, like a chili pepper or uh, episode or junk food episode or something like that. So what I'm going to do to kind of like stretch out my videos, because honestly, I mean, it's coronavirus time right now. Can't really go on too many adventures. And I want to make sure that I'm going to have enough fruit for um, to get through this entire pandemic. So to kind of like space things out a little bit, July is going to have uh, Wednesday videos instead of being another fruit. It's going to be these plant-based milks. So uh, it's going to be milk Wednesday, fruit Sunday, and uh, random bag Friday. So it's going to be like that. That way um, there will be, I'm sure, enough fruit episodes to go on into eternity. <laughs> but uh, just to kind of space it out a little bit, because I'm getting a little bit low in my supply of fruit videos, uh, I try to keep about six months of material ready on the channel, like filmed, not edited, but like filmed so I can edit those and put them out and not have to worry about not having enough content. So I've got a backlog of, uh, yeah, an entire six months. And I've reached the point where I'm like at six months and there isn't like a whole ton of new fruit coming in. Should be able to continue to go on, but just to be filming new content, the, uh, the milk reviews will... Uh, will help with that. So I don't see any any sign of having to uh, shorten the number of videos that I put out, but uh, that could happen, but it probably wouldn't be for you know several months of not being able to have new content. But I'm, I'm still getting new content, but it's less than usual because of uh, the current situation. So it should be okay, but to help out, I'm going to be doing those 
uh, those, I'm going to call it the fake milk face-off, I think. The fake milk face-off videos will be uh, supplementing the fruit videos. And also, they're fun. Um, they're going to be a little bit more, uh, a little higher production value than the typical um, video. I'm shooting little special scenes where, I don't want to spoil it, I don't want to spoil it, but maybe I'll, I'll spoil it uh, next month. And uh, but there's gonna be some su surprises in it. I put a lot of work into it, and uh, I think it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a fun one. Okay, I'm gonna take another quick look at the comments here. If you notice that I'm looking down, that's because my uh, camera is up here. If you're just joining, my cam my uh, computer's down here. Um, rare dry fruit varieties. I'm probably not gonna do dry fruit anytime soon. Uh, I want to keep things fresh whenever possible. Um, and we've got Virginia Fruit Grower says, hi from Virginia Beach. Hi. <laughs> Love Virginia Beach. I go there uh, pretty often, actually. Uh, all right. So next up, I want to review this Tarragon Soda here. So this is a soda that I picked up at a Russian supermarket. I believe it was Russian. This is a Russian product. It was like a European market in... Um, uh, like Sheep's Head Bay in in Brooklyn. Brooklyn in uh, Sheep's Head Bay, it's like one of the largest Russian populations in the world outside of Russia. And this is a common thing there where, uh, I mean, none of this is English. It's all written in, uh, in Russian, but I can see uh, a website on the back that says .ru. So this is from Russia. <laughs> and it is Tarragon Soda. So tarragon is a, a popular soda um, flavor in Russia and other parts of Eastern Europe. So um, yeah, I've had it before, but it's been a while. So let's see, let's see how this is. Hmm, it smells familiar. It smells kind of like um, kind of like cream soda, but like artificial smelling also. Doesn't really taste like tarragon. <laughs> this has um, something that I've, I've had a few times. There's like generic soda flavor, which is usually like bubblegum flavor. I don't like it. Um, this isn't like that but maybe a little bit. It's got like generic fruit flavor, but also um, maybe like a hint of like a vanilla. Yeah, it's kind of like cream soda with a touch of like a generic fruit flavor in it. Yeah, never in a million years would I say that this tastes like tarragon. There's no herbal taste to it or anything. It's okay. It's okay, but it's not. Um, it's not herbal tasting or or anything. Um, you could. I'm not sure if there is any actual tarragon in here. Probably not. But hmm. Not much more to say about it. <laughs> this is why I guess I don't do uh, too many soda reviews. This is like. Yeah, it's kind of boring. Just like. Vanilla, maybe even like artificial peach flavor. Yeah, it's not not great, not great, but it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, moving on. And this is something that I think um, I'm going to keep doing. I think uh, in the future, I'm going to try to do more live streams. Um, so, I mean, they've been doing pretty well. Uh, People seem to like them. You guys like them, right? You guys liking these? I'm not dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I enjoy doing these. And um, I think what I'm going to keep doing is I'm going to do uh, a live stream once a month. And it'll be a similar sort of thing. Give a channel update. Review something strange from my cupboard. I've got uh, a bunch of cupboards over there, like above my, my counter. One of them is where I throw random weird 
fruit things and things people send me and strange things I picked up at grocery stores. I just kind of like buy them and I put them in that cupboard and I kind of forget about them. My cupboard's full of weird, mysterious stuff. So I think what I'm going to do is whenever I do a live stream, I'm going to like open up that cupboard, just like grab something random and put that in the video. And um, yeah, then uh, besides that and an update, uh, do a little Q&A. And, &A, and uh, I think we'll, I'll do that maybe like once a month. And if you guys have any ideas of something that you'd like to see in uh, in one of these live streams, uh, let me know. Yeah, this is kind of a new thing for me. I'm used to just filming um, pre-recorded stuff. I don't haven't done too many of these, but uh, if you guys like them, I'll keep doing them. But if there's any, yeah, if there's anything you'd like to see, let me know, and I'll see what I can do. Um, next order of business is I. A couple of things. Uh, so I just submitted to a website. Uh, I just submitted to a to a contest online. If anyone has go, gone to the website uh, Apartment Therapy, they do this one contest. I think like every year called the Small Cool Contest, and it's for people who have a very small home or small apartment and the sort of like weird things that they've done with it. This is like my thing. <laughs> I live in New York City. I've always had like really tiny apartments and I love using different like space saving sort of furniture and things like that. So when I saw that contest, I was really excited about it and uh, I decided to enter. So I went around, I took photos and wrote descriptions, all the weird like little space savers that I have in my, in my apartment and um, I submitted to that. So I'm on that, which uh, I'll, put a, I'll put a link to that below and I'll probably like, make a video uh, or an update about it uh, if anyone wants to check out you know, what I submitted over there. But it's a cool contest. Go to uh, apartmenttherapy.com and check out the small cool contest. And like they started with 750 square feet to 1,000. My place is smaller than that. And then they went from 501 square feet to 750. My place is smaller than that. And then they went to the next category where I am is uh, 250 square feet to 500, or 251 square feet to 500. That's where I am. My place is 500 square feet, and I packed it with all these weird little space saving sort of things. So uh, I submitted to that. But that's, that's besides the point. The, the main thing is that in doing that, I had an idea to create a new video, kind of like a follow-up to the video that I made of my apartment uh, a while ago, where I had a nightmare apartment. The light fixture leaked. The neighbors were always uh, fighting, uh, or actually like beating somebody up and leaving stuff in the hallway, and not leaving outside. It was a total nightmare. My current place, I love it. This place is great. And I wanted to make an update about that and do like a little tour of my of my place. So this contest kind of like inspired me to do that. Like I signed up over there and then I decided while I had everything um, kind of like set for photos for that contest, I went through and I made a video of, uh, of everything here. And it's not part of of their thing. This is this is all me. So this is uh, just going to be a video for the channel, but it'll be like all sorts of like strange uh, space saving sort of things that I have, as well as like do do it yourself products pro uh, projects that I've I've done, and um, yeah, just also just give a tour of my new place and show how that compares to the total hell that I was living in before. So uh, right now, if you want to see a little preview of that, yeah, go to apartmenttherapy.com. Uh, I'll put a link to a, a direct link to mine, if you'd like, um, in the description uh, after I'm done with this stream. But um, yeah, so that'll give you a little preview of it. But the actual video will be coming out on, uh, I guess, this Friday. This Friday, that'll be coming out on Wednesday. On Wednesday, it'll be showing up on Patreon. And then Friday, it'll be live on, uh, on YouTube. All right, I'm going to take a quick look at the comments here. 
Everybody is behaving, it seems. No trolls. Uh, thank you to Griffin and CJ Rocker for moderating, by the way. Um, so I'll answer a couple questions here before moving on to my next order of business. For those just joining, I've got a sheet here with some, uh, some topics I'm going to talk about. Um, we've got uh, Nameless Gaming just asked if I could review mushrooms. I don't like mushrooms. I'm sorry. I, I get to ask that a lot. Actually, a lot of people would love for me to um, talk about mushrooms, but I, I don't like them. I, I've tried them a few times, tried a few different ones, and the only ones that I kind of can tolerate are uh, wood ear mushrooms. I think that's what they're called. There's, you sometimes get them in like Chinese food, and they just taste like cartilage, like you just like chew on them. They have like very little flavor. I like those because they have you no know, taste to them. The, the texture is like all right. And um, I think truffles are okay. Like truffle oil on like pizza. I, I can get down on some of that. But even then, in a very small amount. So, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not the mushroom guy. I can't be weird mushroom explorer. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, I would like to, but... I'd like to try you know, all fruiting bodies, not just um, not just plain old fruit, but mushrooms also. But it's uh, it's just not my not my thing. Uh, okay, next up in my little cheat sheet here. Uh, oh, that's it. That's all my topics today. So uh, I'm going to take a few questions, and then I'll we'll call it a day. Looks like we're we're going on. Um, well, I don't know. We started so late. We're going on probably like like twenty thirty minutes here. So let's take a look. See any questions? Just let me know, and uh, then we'll we'll call it a day. Can I show my cat? Uh, she's over there. She's sleeping. I don't want to wake her up, uh, but she's sleeping on her scratching post. And I'm afraid that if I try to move this camera, it's gonna. It's not going to work. <laughs> I've got a very long cord going from this camera to my desktop over there, and if I jostle that the wrong way and close the stream early, then I'm not, not ready for that. Maybe next time I can do that. Uh, edible flowers. Uh, Stan Irving asks if I'll do, or Irvin asks if I'll do edible flowers. Yes, absolutely. Edible flowers would be an interesting one. They're kind of hard to find, though. Even in New York, I know a couple places that'll have them, but you know, it's kind of tricky to find those. So I'll uh, I'll definitely do an edible flower video at some point, um, but it'll depend on what what I find, or maybe someone will send them to me or something, and then I'll I'll review them. But um, yeah, right now it's they're just kind of a little tricky to get. They're very perishable, so that's that's what kind of makes them hard. Maybe if I forage them, that'll be the way to do it. But yeah, in the future. Uh, let's see. I have Finn, Finn Finn asked if I've had cactus fruit from the San Saguaro cactus. I have not. I'd like to, though. I've uh, looked, looked that up. It looks pretty interesting. I'd like to try that one. Um, Faith Payne asked if I will travel to Arizona and if I'm interested in doing a meet and greet. Uh, yes and yes. Uh, right now... Unfortunately, I can't really go anywhere, but I've been to Arizona a few times. I've had some work out that way. Uh, it's an interesting place. Definitely a good place for, speaking of cactuses, that would be a good one to find some rare cactuses. But usually when I'm traveling, I'm traveling for work. So uh, I go in, I do a show, and then I leave. And usually these shows are uh, not open to the public. They're like private events and stuff like that. So uh, it's not really... a a time where I'd be able to have a meet and greet to, to Arizona anyway. But what I would like to do, I think, is maybe do um, meet and greets in areas where there's like a ton, there's a demand. Like if I were to put out like maybe like a poll of uh, potential areas where I can go, like who would go to um, Miami, uh, Los Angeles, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, um, Seattle, like some, you know, like some of the bigger uh, cities or something, very like concentrated with with um, 
like a densely populated area, so I know enough people would show up to warrant the the trip. Maybe I'll fly down and do like a, like a screening or something. Over the summer, I did a screening here in New York, and it went pretty well. I had maybe um, I forget how many people came. It was maybe like fifty people, give or take. Which is pretty good. I, I like fifty people show up at an event that I do in Los Angeles, and maybe I charge like a small admission, like ten dollars or something. Uh, that would pay for the trip down and the hotel and everything. Then yeah, sure, I, I would do that. Uh, but yeah, my normal traveling uh, it doesn't really give me enough time to do uh, to do a proper meet and greet. And also, renting venues can be very expensive. So that's also another another tricky thing about it. When I did the meet and greet here in New York, like um, I live here, I didn't have to fly, I didn't have to do anything. I took the subway to my event, and with that, I broke even. I broke even, Steven, like completely. Uh, I don't, I didn't make a dime. I maybe lost like two bucks or something, and uh, that was only because I sold stuff too. Like I sold a few T-shirts, and with the profit I made from T-shirts and from, um, I had a, a suggested donation of, of like $10 or something, but I added all of that together, it paid for the space completely even. And uh, that's all I want. I don't want to lose money. <laughs> but if I, if I can go and just break even, I'm happy with that. And then, yeah, sure, I would, uh, I would fly out somewhere. But it's just finding enough demand. That is, that is the tricky thing. So I'll consider it. But uh, yeah, maybe that'll be something in the future. Maybe in New York, I'll, I'll do one again at some point for sure. But uh, going out to other areas just ends up being an expensive thing. Okay, I'll take another question. Uh, uh, CJ Rocker, our moderator today, asked if I've tried sugarcane. Yes, I had sugarcane um, in... Laos. I didn't make a video about it because at the time I was not doing amazing plants and uh, I was kind of keeping a little bit more restricted with my fruit reviews and not doing anything that was, um, you know, like a fruit, um, what do you call it, like culinary fruit, but like botanically it's, it's more like a vegetable or grass or like whatever. So uh, sugar cane, people eat it like a fruit there. And uh, yeah, like sometimes street vendors would have like a little baggie full of like the cut up fruit and you just kind of like suck on them. Uh, they hurt your mouth because they're so fibrous, they'll kind of like cut the roof of your mouth, but they taste good. It just tastes like pure sugar. Maybe like a little slight chestnutty kind of flavor to them. Uh, sugar cane's tasty. I, I would like to do a, a proper video on it. And uh, that was one of the things I was going to do maybe when I was in Jamaica is uh, there's huge sugar factories there. And what I wanted to do was actually go to a sugar factory and show like how the whole process was done from like the sugar cane to being cut down to going through the processing and then going out and being made into sugar and maybe even go to like a rum factory because they have rum factories all over Jamaica. That was one of my ideas, but unfortunately I just ran out of time. So I wasn't able to go over to the area that had those. My itinerary was just way too tight. So it's something I would like to do in the future. It's a very um, interesting uh, plant. And there's so much um, history and corruption and stuff to it, too. The sugar industry is, like, it's pretty intense when you really, like, learn about it. So I think that would be a, a good one for the future. But if I do it, it probably wouldn't just be like, this is what sugar cane tastes like. It would probably be like a deep dive sort of video, just to give that one uh, a bit more justice. Um, let's see here. This is so much easier with this new setup, guys. Uh, for those who are just joining, I have a new setup here. I'm reading off of a laptop, and I'm being filmed with my, uh, my normal fruit video camera. And just having all the comments right here, I know I have to look down to look at them, which is maybe like a little... Um, a little difficult for you guys, but not having the comments fly by on a phone is so much nicer. Um, first you get the sugar, then you get the power. Uh, have I tried sumac? Uh, that's another one by uh, Thin Thin. Yeah, 
I've tried sumac. I think I need to try it again, though, because uh, I, when I was in Montreal, I went to great effort to get sumac. I was actually, like, traveling, and I think I saw it, like, outside the window of a bus, and I ended up backtracking. I went into, like, the middle of nowhere because I saw sumac just, like, on the side of the road. And I like went into a field and I collected a bunch of it and I took it back to my hotel and I tried making sumac tea out of it. And uh, the problem is that it had just recently rained. And for those that don't know, sumac is like, it's like this fuzzy little thing. It's a fuzzy little, little cluster of little berries, a very tight cluster. And the flavor is like on the outside of it, which is a little troubling to me because like, you're usually if you forage that it ends up being like on the side of the road or something you have to find it in an area where it's not going to get pollutants on it so i found a place where it didn't have a lot of pollutants around it wasn't like on the highway and uh but the problem is it just rained so the rain hit it and it washed away all the flavor so i made a tea out of it i made this whole review i went to all this trouble and then i tasted it and it didn't taste like anything it tasted like a stick because you know, it washed up all the flavor. And then um, I was sent sumac. I believe it was sent to me by um, uh, Matt from mattspeppers.com. Yeah, it was Matt from mattspeppers.com who sent me like a ton of great stuff. And that one, I made another review of that. But when I opened it up, because he foraged it, it was buggy on the inside. So it was all sorts of like little bug poop and, and stuff. So I made a review and I tasted it. It was okay. But it was like kind of gross because of the bug, bug poop. So I didn't post that one. But I have like two kind of incomplete bad reviews of sumac. Maybe one day I'll post one of those. But I'm kind of holding out for a better one. So I have that in my in my future catalog of videos to post. And if I don't find a better uh, specimen of sumac, I'll post one of those. But I feel like my experience has not been so great for it. Uh, okay, I'm going to take two more questions. Peter L. says, please notice me. I love your videos. Hi, Peter. Um, uh, meme historian, I love your videos. Thank you. I just blew Peter L's mind. Uh, <laughs> the best non-Japanese orange or mandarin is what Finfin asks. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I made one. I don't, can't remember the name of it. Uh... Gold Nugget. The Gold Nugget's really good. I don't know if it's the best I've had, but that one was really tasty. Uh, okay. One more question, guys. Let me see. I'm going to click this so it doesn't scroll so fast. A uh, gray ecologist said, uh, with international travel restricted, I can review fruit at a U.S. farmer's market. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah. Right now, I'm, like, under quarantine. I can't really go outside that much. But um, there are some farmer farmer's markets in New York City that are still open. They are... I guess a little bit safer than going to a supermarket because you can socially distance better like outdoors as long as it's not like super crowded and um, with most people staying indoors. Although now it's, now that it's getting nice out, maybe they're not so safe anymore, but um, it's been kind of cold here recently and I would go out to the farmer's markets around here. And um, I unfortunately didn't find anything too crazy um, I think it's just more like the season and I'm in a, in a temperate area, you know, I'm not in, you know, California or Florida where they're going to have like weird citruses and stuff. I'm, um, basically getting like a lot of 
greens. You can find some interesting greens, like rainbow chard was out there and some interesting herbs and stuff. But I did find one vendor that had a ton of different apples, which uh, I haven't really talked about apples that much because I feel like apples are just, you know, that that is like the quintessential boring for people say, oh, apples or something. I feel like those are not so super exciting. Um, but apples are. There, there's just so many varieties of them. And some of them taste really different. Like I had some that tasted kind of like raspberries. I had some that tasted kind of like wine. Some are really sweet. Some are sour. You know, there's so many different variations in the different varieties of apples out there. So I made two videos. Maybe I'll do another one uh, if I go to the farmer's market and they have more varieties out. But I made two videos and each one I reviewed um, like a quick side-by-side -side of four different apples to kind of like show the variation between them. So um, yeah, the, the farmer's markets being open right now has been helpful for me getting content. It's difficult for me to find new things right now. Like if uh, regular supermarkets in my neighborhood don't really have anything too crazy, which um, the use the whole damn thing month, uh, if you just joining uh, next month is use the whole damn thing month where I'm going to use like nose to tail of fruits. So I'll use the rind seeds and all that and show different recipes of using the whole thing. Um, that was a good one. Uh, I, I've been wanting to do that for a while, but the pandemic made it, uh, didn't really affect that. You know, you can get a lot of fruit uh, that would be, would qualify that at just regular supermarkets. So I was able to get a lot of new content through that. But finding new content right now in my neck of the woods is kind of tricky. A lot of it is people are sending me stuff. That's great. Um, the whole damn thing month was great. But supermarkets don't really have anything new for me around here. Uh, if I go into the city, like into Manhattan and look around, uh, I can sometimes find stuff in like Chinatown or I can find something in uh, at Italy, which I've mentioned a few times. But not really in my immediate area. So... Um, Farmers markets, that opened up a new door. So yeah, that's 100% true. And I think uh, I'm gonna keep an eye out and maybe find a little bit more. There is uh, just a couple farmers markets in, that I can, I can reach without going any great distance. So I'm kind of limited there still. In New York City, you don't wanna go on a subway right now. Um, not just because you're, you know, in contact with more people, but they've basically been taken over by the homeless, which is a really weird situation. But uh, if you go on subways, I've, I've noticed some, some news articles about it. If you go on the subway in New York City now, they're just, it, they've been taken over. So few people are traveling now that the homeless are going underground and um, they're staying in the subway cars and stuff like that. So right now it's, and you know, it, it's sad, you know, it's a really sad situation and they're very vulnerable to the coronavirus. So for me, it's like, it, it, it's like so many reasons why like, you do not want to go on a subway right now. It just is uh, making me vulnerable to it. So uh, I'm limited to where I can walk to, where I can um, take a bus to, like buses are all right for the most part. So I can't reach too many different places to explore. But um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm thinking maybe like going foraging a little bit and uh, seeing what's around the neighborhood. But um, yeah, so I think that is about it. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for tuning in to this live stream. I hope my new setup uh, worked out. I hope I look okay. I know it took a little little while to get rolling here, but I think this is gonna be uh, pretty smooth. And if you didn't see earlier on in the, in the live stream, I mentioned I'm gonna be doing more of these. I think every month. I'll be doing this. And uh, again, um, check out apartmenttherapy.com. If you go through there, you'll see uh, you'll see uh, my sexy couch eventually if you go through there. I'll, I'll post a link below if you want to check that out. It's going to be a little preview of a um, an exciting video I'll be doing on Friday where I do a little apartment tour. And um, yeah, tune in next month for the Use the Whole Damn Thing month. That's going to be fun and lots of good stuff going on. So uh, until then, I'll see you. Take care, guys. I'm going to have to walk over here to close the stream. All right. Bye-bye.